All right, in this episode, we talk about the pros and cons of the tall pitcher and the short pitcher. All right, Brent Porcio, Steve Godana here at the At Top Velocity hashtag pitching tip show where you go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and At Top Velocity hashtag pitching tip. You ask your question on anything about pitching, anything we do here at Top Velocity, and we answer it here on the show. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the page, share the video, help us keep this going. Uh, and of course, keep asking your questions. We've had some great questions so far. So what's the question for today? William Goodman asks, what are the pros and cons of both the tall, thin pitcher and the shorter, thicker pitcher? All right, it's an interesting question. Um, I typically make this analogy with the tall, thin pitcher and the short, stocky pitcher is best way to understand it is it kind of more the elasticity of it um, is in rubber bands. So think of a long and skinny rubber band, a short and stocky rubber band. That would be kind of a good way to simply understand the challenges or the pros and cons of those type of pitchers. The long and skinny pitcher, the long and lanky, tall and lanky pitcher, is going to have typically more levers, bigger levers, more mobility, more easily able to get into certain positions that we've defined in the 3X Pitching Velocity Program, uh, typically of what high velocity pitchers do, um, and more easily when they put some type of power behind it, they can leverage a lot more speed. So they do have advantages on leverage, which is huge, and you know, here's another analogy to think of levers is I like to talk about like a, a, a multi-speed bicycle. When I'm on the, on the big gear, you know, the 10 speed, um, I don't have to move as fast as the smaller gears. I just have to put some force behind it and it will go at a lot faster speed than if I go to that little bitty gear, I gotta be like, that's a, that's a way to understand the tall and lanky or the tall to the short pitcher when it comes to levers uh, and the benefits there. But the elasticity of it uh, helps us understand when we do get into using those levers, the tall and thin guy can easily get in those positions. He can easily pull his rubber band back. But the problem is it's hard to get tension in it. All right, so the short and stocky guy, man, once his pulls, he gets tension and it gets going. It's just the challenge is, is for him to pull it back. So to really understand that, not to get too lost in this analogy or the difference between thin, you know, tall and lanky, short and stocky pitchers is that um, tension is as important as mobility, right? So it's like if we look on both spectrums here, we can go tall and thin guy, a lot of mobility, more than likely, not every tall guy is going to have, you know, insane mobility. A lot, a lot of them do and that the levers make it easier. So he has more mobility, but he lacks in tension in speed and power to, to move through that mobility. So that's typically what he has to work to do. So his negatives are not enough tension, not enough speed and power, which is critical for velocity. But on the shorter guy in, he can get the tension. He already has the tension, that thick rubber band. He just lacks on the ability to get the range of motion behind it, which gives him the time to use more of that tension to generate speeds. And it's a really good way to understand the high velocity pitcher. It's like, we don't want to be so mobile. We're like Gumby, if you're not too old to understand that reference, you know, where you're can't even keep stability in your joints, right? We don't want to be that mobile. But we also don't want to be so tense to where, you know, we got nothing. I can't even lift my arms. I can't even get them back in that position. So there obviously is a middle position we want to be in that's going to be ideal to the high velocity pitcher. Of course, for example, if we could get the best of both, that'd be great. If I could have all the mobility in the world and all the tension to go with it, it's freakish. And I typically, I think that's what you see in guys like Chapman, even like Tim Linskin back when he used to throw hard is you see these guys with crazy mobility and crazy tension to fire those mobilities. But that, that to me, I would have to say is highly built on genetics. Um, but you can condition these things. Meaning like, if we look at the spectrum and you're so far on the mobility side, you can get tension in your muscles. That's what most strength and conditioning programs do. But if you're so far on the tension side, you can get mobility. And that's what a good mobility program 
should do. And, and, but how much can you influence it? Of course, it's not gonna be um, that dramatic, more on the tension side, I truly believe. That's why if a guy comes in here at 6'9", 195 pounds, better chance I'll make this guy throw 95 as opposed to a guy coming in here at 5'7", you know, 200 pounds, <laughs> a lot harder to get him to throw 90 plus because uh, the mobility is something we can't influence as dramatic as speed, power, force production, and tension. So um, simply the pros and cons of the, the tall guy is the pros is that he can, he's going to get the mobility, he's going to get in the positions, he's got the levers, he's the, the negatives, the cons are going to be he lacks in the, the tension, the speed, the power, the force production. The short and stocky guy, pros and cons, his pros are he has the tension, he has the explosiveness, he has the strength, he has the durability, but he's going to lack in his cons, the negatives are going to be poor range of motion um, and then probably poor timing of movement, poor ability to connect the full sequence as he moves up the connect chain because you need time to do that and more range of motion gives you that time. So that would pretty much be the list. Anything you want to add to that? Uh, I just want to say that like no two athletes are, are exactly the same and like that's what kind of makes this question like a, it's hard to just put like all like tall thin guys into one category and all short and stocky guys into one category because there can be different things with each athlete well there are different things with each athlete that each person needs to work on individually but um, I would just say for benefit benefits of it like um, I think tall thinner thinner guys um, I think are more along the lines of kind of like more uh, plyometrically stable. Think of like a tall, thin, like uh, basketball player where like, yeah, like, uh, you know, they, they have natural um, uh, gifted plyometric abilities, but like if you put them underneath a bar, like a, a squat bar, they're gonna crumble. So I think uh, the, benef the benefits for them, like Brent says, like long levers, like kind of natu naturally plyometrically gifted, but really lacking uh, strength and I think that's why uh, when tall guys kind of go through this program, they actually make gains really quickly because we uh, focus a lot on building up strength, building up base, uh, kind of working all aspects of it. And that works really well for the tall, tall, thin guys as they start putting on weight and getting strength, they, they start, their velocity starts picking up as well. But the benefits for um, the short, stocky uh, guy, like Brent's saying, is short, stocky guys, t they tend to be, I think um, stronger in the weight room just naturally, less plyometrically gifted, but more naturally stronger than they are fast. So like um, they might have really good numbers in the weight room, but uh, again, not all guys are this way. Like not two, every two athletes are the same. I'm just saying in general, short and stocky guys tend to be really strong in the weight room. And then if you go and try to uh, do a race with them, you're gonna smoke them in a race because they might not just be uh, the speed might not be uh, there, the mobility might not be there, like Brent was saying. So I think the benefits of being short and stocky is you might have a lot of strength, which you can uh, have one part of the equation down for power, but uh, then again, you might need to shift it to another side and kind of start, uh, as you're maintaining that strength, start building some speed there for power too. So there are benefits for each one. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you know, you can't beat levers, man. Guys that are just tall, they're just, lucky um, to have that advantage. So a shorter guy is going to have to be so much faster, so much more explosive uh, to really overcompensate and to make up for that loss in leverage that that taller guy has had. So unfortunately, the shorter guys, the stockier guys, they have to work harder to get those speeds and then what range of motion they can to really keep up with those tall guys. All right, so it's a good question. If you have a question, go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and at Top Velocity, hashtag Pitch and Tips. Ask your question. We're going to answer here on the show. And if you haven't already, go, go to topvelocity.net. Check out our 3X programs, 2X programs. Check out our 3X Velocity camps that are coming up. Come down here and train with us. Um, really look, would like to work with you towards your velocity goals. But uh, go get those questions out there so we can keep this show going. See you next time. Boys. Yeah. Hold on.